Now that George had brown paint, he was ready to make the rest of his colors. Except the bunny had its own idea for the fresh fruit. Oh, there you are, George. You took off so fast, I didn't get to ask what you'd like to drink. I have cranberry juice, carrot juice, grape juice, blueberry juice, wheatgrass juice. <laughs> George took one of each, because an artist never knows when a rabbit might eat his art supplies. That is one healthy monkey. The juice worked great. No mashing necessary. George had his paint, and his new friends had lunch. Only his sand didn't slip. It stuck. Maybe it needed to dry. Watching paint dry was about as much fun as, well, watching paint dry. George thought of a way to speed up the process. He wants a hair dryer in the desert. But instead of drying, his paint went flying. <gasps> so George found a way to keep his paint in place. Plus, the bottles made painting a snap. George's friends had developed a real taste for art. So George found a way to keep his painting safe from bunnies. But not breezes. It almost made him miss the sticky stuff. Do you need a napkin? Fork? Radio. <laughs> of course. Glue. Why didn't I think of that? A monkey with glue. He had his paint. He had his canvas. And he had an audience. He glued. He painted. He could do them at the same time. And if you put on too much sand, no problem. Only the sand on the glue stuck. He couldn't wait for the man and John to see it. Why wait? His sand painting was portable. Wow. Is that a sand painting? You are some artist. <laughs> For me? Thank you, but why? <laughs> That's okay. Sand paintings are supposed to get messed up. That's how the medicine is released. Oh, no, you don't have to mess up this one. Some sand paintings are medicine, others are art. Well, I guess giving glue to a monkey was a good thing after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say, George, uh, think maybe you could make one for us next? Yeah. He sure could, but he'd need a new canvas.
His pod comes in with the tide. A pod is a group of dolphins that travel together. I think he wants to play. <laughs> Swimming with a dolphin is fun. Even if a dolphin swam a lot faster than you. Oh, wow! <gasps> Come on, George. Let's follow it underwater. Take a deep breath. <sighs> George and Marco were surprised how long the dolphin could hold his breath. <laughs> the dolphin also made way cooler air bubbles. Dolphins are excellent at finding things. Did you hear those sounds they were making underwater? <laughs> He's using his sonar. The sounds bounce off the mask and tell him where to find it. Oh. See you later. Hey, can't we just walk back? I thought you could touch the bottom. We could, but the tide has been coming in while we've been playing. So now we can't. Hey, who moved the house? <laughs> the tide. Huh? I mean, the house didn't move. We did. The tide carried us down the shore while we were swimming. Uh, George, if the water's this deep, then where's our buried treasure? Huh? What are you guys looking for? We couldn't find any treasure, so we buried our own. Only now, it's underwater. Well, the good news is, the tide will be out again in about six hours. I bet we'll find it then. treasure wasn't buried anymore. Something had dug it up and moved it. <laughs> oh, George, the tide doesn't just bring sand in, it takes it out too. That explains how the box got dug up. But how did it get over here? And then he remembered. The tide had carried them down the beach, so it must have carried their treasure chest too. Treasure, it's gone. Well, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. George was sad about his toys, but Marco had lost his favorite thing, his silver wolf. George had to find it. If the tide had carried them in the box down shore, maybe it had carried silver wolf even further down. find Silver Wolf way out there. Say, George... ...is to keep the doors closed. 
<laughs> ah, much better. The man was right. It was much warmer inside. But outside, it was colder than ever. couldn't bring Jumpy inside where it was warm, he'd bring the warm outside to Jumpy. <laughs> Except trees didn't come with windows to seal. <laughs> if squirrels lived in houses instead of trees, George would know exactly what to do. George saw it. It was the perfect squirrel house. Except it did have a lot of cracks. So George cocked them. Now he needed some fluffy stuff. But he was out of fluffy stuff. <gasps> the lint from the clothes dryer would work just as well. <laughs> Bye, George. Huh, that is one fast lint cleaning monkey. To keep the fluffy stuff stuffed, George needed walls to hold it in place. But where would he find squirrel walls? <laughs> Cardboard. If Jumpy's house was going to stay really warm, it needed a door. Only squirrels can't turn doorknobs. George could think about it while he ate lunch. Hmm, maybe a teapot could be a door. Nah, or maybe a ceramic chicken thingy. Or... That's it. A postcard would be just the right size. <laughs> now that his house was finished, he had to furnish it. It was the perfect squirrel house. <laughs> Getting Jumpy to live there was harder than George thought. <laughs> His squirrel house was missing one very important thing. Jumpy was surprised. The monkey's place was nice. It was warm and dry. Now everyone would be cozy this winter. It was a good thing that George knew how to make cozy, insulated houses. A very good thing. Oh, no. Oh. Mom, could I check out a chicken? 
What did the library have that the chicken coop didn't? something. <laughs> the cookbooks kept some sound out. Uh, uh. Mm. I'm sorry, Giorgio, but I need them. They have all of my secret family recipes. <laughs> They're so secret, even I forget them if I don't have the books. And then George realized books were just a bunch of paper. He knew where to find lots and lots of that. The recycling room was full of it. Oh. But he ran out of paper, and he still needed to cover the roof and the floor. Maybe the recycling room had stuff for that, too. <laughs> Hundley couldn't figure out what that monkey was up to. Oh. Cans didn't make things quiet. Oh. Neither did bottles. Peanuts did. The cardboard might come in handy too. Oh, thank goodness you're here. Everything was piling up. Newspapers, boxes, packing peanuts. Huh? Oh. oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Packing peanuts made chickens wobbly. <laughs> so George put them where the chickens didn't walk. Bubble wrap was a terrible floor covering. But cardboard worked great. Now, if he could just keep sound from coming in the window. But that made the coop look spooky. Maybe that bubble wrap was good for something after all. <laughs> George could hardly wait until night to try the coop out. But he didn't have to. Once he finished soundproofing, the coop was so quiet, he fell asleep. and it wasn't even nap time. It was the quietest coop ever. Still no eggs, huh? <laughs> <laughs> eggs! <laughs> you fixing my chickens, Georgie. Now we can make my famous pesto and peppers omelet. <laughs> and to George, breakfast never sounded so good. <laughs> oh no, the store was closed and George was locked in. Oh, <laughs> oh well. He'd just have to make his lampshade here. 
first, he had to gather up materials. Skates would definitely make that easier. Fortunately, Mabel had everything he needed. George decided to keep track of the stuff he used so he could pay the store back later. Even a monkey on a mission has to take time out for a little fun. George, I'm back. Sorry I took so long. Things kept falling. George? Hello? Huh. I wonder where he is. George was in housewares. <laughs> now it was time to get back to work. George! George! George decided to trace the lampshade. <laughs> it was time to make the cutout. Should he cut out a train or something else? Lampshade was done. He couldn't wait to show it to the man with the yellow hat. Except he couldn't show it to him because he was locked in. And George had no way to tell him where he was. Or maybe he did. had to do was wait. <laughs> George? Oh, looking for a monkey in the city is like looking for a needle in a... little monkey. Hi. We're closed. Uh, come back tomorrow. I just need to pick up my monkey. That's a new one. George thought it was great to be home, even if he had no idea how he got there.
the next morning, George was eager to see how his duckling was doing with his new duck family. Here we are on day two of the Duckling Chronicles. Look at that! The fourth duckling is with it. Oops! Spoke too soon. still thinks George is its mother. George had to show the duckling that monkeys are one thing and ducks are another. <laughs> you make an excellent duckling, George. This was getting nowhere. George decided to try another approach. Farmer Life Magazine? How is that going to help? George wanted to show the duckling that in a typical duck family, there aren't any monkeys. <laughs> That wasn't working either. Maybe if George showed him how to act, the duckling would get the idea. It looks like George is trying the make like a duck maneuver. <laughs> like only a mother duck can. And so, the ducklings were brought together by this daring rescue and by the kid from the city who helped to hatch them. Fantastic! <laughs> 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 You know, I got to get some cookbooks, too, so I'll check this out up front. Bye-bye, little buddy. <coughs> I mean, bye-bye, little buddy. <coughs> hmm. Organizing books by color didn't seem to work. Maybe they should be organized by size instead.
Little books, medium books, big books, humongous books. George had fixed the library again. Ah, <laughs> oh, George, what happened? The books are all messed up. Huh? Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> this is where all the outer space books are supposed to be. But instead, you've got uh, bunny books, train books, bug books, pink pony books. Ah, where are all the outer space books? <laughs> George tried to explain to Steve how he had organized all the books. all the books by size? Uh -huh. That's amazing! But I don't think that's the way libraries work. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, outer space books are supposed to go on this shelf, and books about dinosaurs go on that shelf, and all the other books, uh, I don't know where they go. Hmm. George wondered. If outer space books all go together, and dinosaur books all go together, well, then maybe train books go with other train books, no matter what size or color they are. Yeah, train books probably go together. Uh -huh. Hey, I get it. Maybe all the books are organized by subject. Cool. Yeah, you've got a lot of rearranging to do. But don't worry, I'll help. <laughs> we did it! The books are back in the right order. Great job, you hairy librarian. <laughs> I'm back, George. My, it looks neat as a pin in here. All the books are back where they should be, on the shelves according to their subject. Uh, right? Well, mostly right. Books are typically arranged by subject, then by author alphabetically. Oh. <laughs> Except storybooks. They go together by author. <laughs> I'm sure I can put things right in no time. Great. <laughs> Sounds like you did a great job, George. Hey, maybe you'd like to help out at the library every Saturday. <laughs> Helping Mrs. Dewey was fun, but exhausting. Yoo-hoo, George! You forgot your book! <laughs> On the other hand, only a librarian would give you Adventurous Henry for another two weeks. What could be better than that? found the wagon, but Jade was gone. And now she had a million places to hide. <laughs> Hi, George. Oh, what happened here? Oh, boy. <sighs> hey, Jade. Well, I don't know where George went, but I have to get you to the zoo. I can't be late for Professor Chroma. George knew he couldn't look everywhere for Jade. He needed a plan. In the apartment, Jade had hidden in three places. Under the couch, on top of the lamp, and behind the radiator. They were all places George couldn't reach. They were also warm places. Maybe Jade liked to be warm. Maybe that's where George should look. <laughs> <laughs> the popcorn popper was warm. But Jade wasn't there. The vegetable barbecue also had heat, but it didn't have Jade. Was there a warm place? 
place that George had missed? George had to do was put Jade back in her cage. Huh? The cage was gone. <coughs> that meant that the man had taken Squeaky to the zoo instead of Jade. <coughs> hey, George, what's the rush? <coughs> uh, sounds exciting. Well, hop on. Meanwhile, the man with the yellow hat had just finished telling the dramatic story of Jade's rescue. And now I would like to examine Jade. If she is the rare chameleon that you say, then, and only then, can she stay. Well, of course. <coughs> uh, squeaky? What was that sound? What? The squeak? Oh, um... Hey, let's all go to lunch, huh? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm starving. The chameleon, please. Show me the chameleon. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> George? Hello. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, oh. Well, it's... Perhaps... Yes! This is the chameleon we've been hoping for! Oh, welcome, Jade, to the zoo. <laughs> George had discovered a big difference between the city and the country. Cement. Then, he found some dirt. George remembered that a well didn't need to be wide, it just needed to be deep. The ground was wet. At this rate, George should hit water very soon. George had water. What he didn't have was a way to get it out of the ground. George needed something that would suck up the water, like a pump. A straw sucks up water, but you need a mouth at the top. But the man's turkey baster might work. with a turkey baster? It's not Thanksgiving, is it? At this rate, filling the bathtub would take... Ah. forever. George remembered that people used pipes to carry water from their wells. Ah. So that's what George needed. A very long pipe. George ran the hose from the bathtub down to his well. How could George attach the hose to the baster? The water came into the baster from the bottom, so George needed some way to connect the hose to the side. Maybe this would work. With duct tape, anything was possible.
It worked. The water was going up the straw. At this rate, George would have his bathtub filled in no time. Except the well was out of water. George had to dig a deeper hole. George had struck the mother load of water. Water spurting up 20 feet in the middle of the city? Not a good sign. See, the whole reason we turned the water off was to figure out why we were losing pressure. Uh, turns out the water main leading to the building had a crack in it. I still don't know how George discovered the water main or the crack, but it's a good thing you did. <laughs> Well, I have to say, George, you haven't looked this clean in days. When you take a bath, you really take a bath. <laughs> Using the detector, George found lots of metal things. <laughs> None of them was your bow. Oh, the batteries are dead. I'll have to recharge them, but I'll bring this back tomorrow in case you're still looking. Bye now. Thank you. <laughs> George couldn't wait for tomorrow. He had to find your bow before he rusted. That's probably Professor Wiseman. Maybe she can think of something. I heard there was a storm, so I thought I'd check in. Oh, what's wrong? Well, George can't find his robot. It's buried in the sand. Hmm. Is it made of metal? Uh-huh. You could try using a metal detector. We borrowed one, but it ran out of batteries. Well, metal detectors are easy to make. Huh? Sure. First, grab the portable radio from the shelf. Okay. AM, FM radio, check. Next, find the calculator. A uh, bottom drawer on the desk. <laughs> then get some tape. A top drawer on the desk. <laughs> now take the radio and switch it to AM. Okay. Then turn the knob all the way to the highest radio station number. But make sure you get static and not an actual station. Turn up the volume. Then turn on the calculator and tape it to the radio. Fantastic! You see, the radio and calculator act as a magnet. When it finds things that would stick to a magnet, the radio beeps. <laughs> That's amazing! I can't believe you knew that. Well, how do you think I won first place in my second grade science fair? George was confused. He had already searched half the beach. But which half? If only the beach were smaller. Then George remembered tic-tac-toe. He could break up the beach into smaller sections, like a tic-tac-toe board. If George could mark off the squares he searched, then he'd know where he'd looked and where he needed to look. Hi, George. <laughs> you want to make a grid to help you keep track of your search? Oh, great idea, George. All set. Let me know if you need anything. If George searched every square, then he'd be sure to find your bow. In square number four, George found a trumpet. In square six, George found 
a front grille to a 57 Cadillac. But by square number eight, there was still no sign of Yorbo. No luck, huh? Yorbo had to be in this last square. He had to. I can get back to the thrilling conclusion of my book. Oh well. Wait for me! <laughs> On sunny, snowy days... Uh... <sighs> oh! <laughs> George usually got up bright and early. He discovered that Bill had gotten up even brighter and earlier. Hey, George! Hey! Oh, huh. Snow blocks. I'm building a house out of snow, although the correct term is igloo. <laughs> yep. I'm trying to earn my sprout badge in winter camping. And to do that, I have to build an igloo and sleep in it overnight. Ooh. Suddenly, that was exactly what George wanted to do. Build an igloo and sleep in it, just like Bill. <laughs> you want to help me? <laughs> and sleep in the igloo, too? <laughs> Why not? Let's get started. <laughs> That's not the proper technique. Guess I better show you. Uh, city kids probably don't know much about non-mortar construction. Uh, uh, hey. uh, see? The first thing you do is mark a circle in the snow. That's your foundation. Then you take the biggest blocks and fit them together like this. Oh. Bill showed George how to build up the igloo walls block by block, making sure that the top layer overlapped the bottom. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, and when we're all done, we can just smooth out the inside. As they built it up, the igloo started to look like a volleyball cut in half. See, we keep shaping these blocks and put them all the way around until there's just a small hole left in the center. <laughs> and we fill that with a large block called a keystone. You have to cram it in so it'll hold the walls in place. <laughs> now, I'll just make a few air holes. And once we fill all these cracks of snow, it'll stay pretty warm. Yep. We're done. Ah, ah! Let's go check it out. Ah, ah! Ooh, ooh. George was so excited. He had never been in an igloo before. The inside of the igloo was smaller than George thought. He had wanted a fun igloo. One that was big enough for a bed and a tuba and his friends. Sort of like his room, only better. build your own igloo? Uh -huh. Sure, I wish I could help you, but I 
gotta fill up these cracks and then do my chores. So George started on his second igloo of the day with help from the man with the yellow cap. But this time, he built it wider and taller and brought in some furniture. Wow, good window. <laughs> Are you sure you want to spend the night in here, George? <laughs> Okie doke. I guess it's time to make the cocoa. Okay. Hey, George. How's it? Whoa, this is huge. You put a bed in here? <laughs> and a sofa? Oh. <laughs> wow. The only thing is, it might get cold at night. The bigger the igloo, the colder it gets. <laughs> George wasn't worried. He figured he'd just wear his coat to bed. Today was a busy day at George's apartment. Professor Wiseman was coming to dinner, and the man with the yellow hat wanted everything to be just right. I have an idea. Why don't I finish getting the apartment ready and you go to the store? <laughs> Great, let's make a list. Okay. Okay, I need carrots for my famous carrot cake. <laughs> Cucumbers for my famous cucumber soup. <laughs> and uh, apples for my famous uh, bowl of apples. Here's a bag and some money, George, and have fun. Bye-bye. <laughs> when George got to their favorite store, it was closed. The grocer was on his annual fishing trip. Welcome to Hua Mai Grocery and Takeout. It's our grand opening. Ooh. Our first customer. We are selling Vietnamese food. Please, try a sample. Cha Yo. It's a spring roll. <laughs> ah, come on in and... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Clean up on IO3. George thought the food looked delicious, and the store looked beautiful. Hmm. But the fruits and vegetables looked different somehow. Hmm. This was green and long and bumpy. Hmm. Must be a cucumber. Next on the list, red round apples. This looked like an apple. Now all George needed to find were the carrots. <laughs> were these carrots? George didn't know for sure, but they looked like carrots and were bunched up like carrots. <laughs> ah. Customer number one. You ready? <laughs> ah, let's see. You have a kokwa, uh, some fatu, and a few taklu. Very good choices. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you very much. How was school today, Mai? Great, Dad. But who was that? Our very first customer. Our first customer was a monkey? <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, great. Did you find everything? 
Oh. But this is a pomegranate, George, not an apple. Huh? Yes, and I don't know what these other things are. Thanks, George. George decided that this time he'd ask for help. You're back. Hi. My name's Mai. Ah, ah. Can I help you? Fatu, Taklo, and Kogwa. Yum! But didn't you just buy these? <laughs> Uh, is that an alligator? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't read this. <laughs> oh. 